hey, hey, once again, Beatzilla PDX just coming here with a quick news briefing. They are expecting another incident at the nation's capital. This will be around the actual inauguration. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's hear it. As we've been reporting, last week's insurrection at the Capitol is raising new security concerns in Washington ahead of the pre president-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. Amna Nawaz picks up our story from here. Judy, D.C. is on high alert, and as Lisa reported earlier, additional members of the National Guard are being brought into the nation's capital to help with security. Muriel Bowser is the mayor of D.C., and she joins us now. Madam Mayor, welcome back to the News Hour, and thank you for making the time. Can you share with us, as of today, what specific threats do you know of targeting D.C. in and around the inauguration? Uh, well, we know, and the FBI has released a briefing uh, announcing what are the known threats, not only in Washington, D.C., um, but in states uh, around our country. Uh, we also know uh, that uh, several requests that I have made to the federal government have been granted. Uh, I sent a letter over uh, the weekend to Homeland, to the Department of Homeland Security requesting that they extend the time period for the national special security event um, that supports the inauguration, which they have done. Um, that time frame has moved from the 19th of January to the 13th of January. Uh, and I just learned that our request for a pre-disaster declaration, which allows uh, FEMA and other federal agencies to work seamlessly with us, has also been approved. But can I ask, when, with regard to the threats around inauguration, have you been told that those are specific, are the same kind of actors and groups that we saw on the Capitol attack, or new and different threats? Well, our team uh, has just been briefed today by the FBI, and we'll get daily um, briefings from them that talk about the nature and the specificity of the threats. Can I ask you the designation you just mentioned by the now outgoing acting Secretary of Homeland Security, Chad Wolf, who has just announced today he is resigning. It's one of his final acts. Does that go far enough to secure the District of Columbia? What other specific steps do you want to see done? Well, our police department is working hand in hand with the uh, Secret Service. And that designation, uh, mind you, uh, puts all federal assets under the command and the control of the United States Secret Service, including the Capitol grounds and other specific federal assets, which is very important uh, because it will allow for the seamless deployment of uh, necessary forces. Uh, we know that the National Guard, for example, has committed to have 15,000 uh, National Guardsmen and women uh, deployed uh, in the District of Columbia, uh, including uh, around the Capitol grounds and other federal assets assets, uh, and uh, we they are responding to very specific requests that we have to secure the perimeter. Madam Mayor, there's a lot of questions about accountability following the attack last week on the Capitol. And just tonight, the D.C.'s Attorney General said in an interview that his office is looking into potentially charging President Trump for inciting violence when he was speaking to the crowd that he then instructed to march over to the Capitol. Would you support moving forward with those kinds of charges? Uh, I support full accountability uh, for all of those responsible for inciting violence. Um, and I think it's very clear that the president you not of the United States is one of the main and most important actors in inciting violence. Wait a minute. That's not true. See, they're playing the image game, family. Let's put history of white supremacists all on Donald Trump. That's not a fair and accurate depiction. No, these are Americans. Their own personal bias existed before Donald Trump entered into the White House. You are not ready to die for something that just popped up less than three years ago or less than four years ago at this point. 
That doesn't make any sense. That is what they keep saying. But that doesn't make any sense. So whether it be criminal accountability or accountability that's driven by the Congress of the United States. Okay. Criminal accountability, like the dead policeman or the people who helped get this woman killed. Like that accountability, because these people are only being hit with trespassing laws. So what, are, what accountability is there is the world seeing for a whole capital of the power of the world being stormed by racist, white supremacist, terrorists acting domestically gang members. I think you should be looking at gang injunctions and RICO predicates and Patriot Act. This is a terrorist domestic, not a domestic terrorist. There is no such thing. Uh, he must be held accountable for all he's done. Um, but we also know um, that the people who... Lay Shouldn't that be they all should be held accountable for what they done? How can he be accountable for them? A siege to the Capitol um, bear a lot of responsibility. I understand that the FBI has received over 50,000 tips uh, related to naming those people, um, finding them, arresting them. Doesn't matter if you ain't going to charge them with nothing. We're still understanding the timeline of that day. There's been a lot of reporting around exactly what happened. We know on the attack day, the mob breached the Capitol just before two o'clock. We also know that the first National Guard troops didn't arrive on the scene until after 540 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't control those troops. They're under the Secretary of the Army's control. But what is your understanding of what took so long? You see how she, she cleared that up? So if she's not the one responsible, why is she the one you're talking to? She's the mayor of the city, but she has no jurisdiction over the police. How does that make sense? That day. Well, I think that there will be a, a, a lot of uh, questions that are investigated and they deserve an investigation. So something like this <laughs> never, never happens again to one of our critical institutions, uh, especially when there was a joint uh, session of Congress in place, uh, especially when a very critical part of certifying our election uh, was happening. Uh, so we look forward to those uh, discussions uh, to make sure that all law enforcement have the resources they need for critical events. And all of this, <clears throat> let's go out of that because we've heard enough BS. And all of this that you have heard and seen about this week's uh, Capitol Hill siege, you don't seem to hear the same energy at all coming out of these officials with the this won't be tolerated, uh, we'll shoot the looters. All of these things are being like swept away out of the minds of the people. But somehow keep bringing back Black Lives Matter and Antifa. That's not who was there. So Black Lives Matter protests have nothing to do with it. Either it's Donald Trump exciting this or it's Black Lives Matter. You can't really have both. You have back the blue people going in there beating up a police officer talking about we're doing this for you. Back the blue. So just a little quick hit. I wanted to give a little commentary on this up and coming inauguration. Black folks, you might not want to be on the streets in D.C. Not for that day. Let things play out with your absence. 
Sometimes you just want to sit on the side. Actually, sometimes you need to sit on the sidelines. And this is one of them. So definitely come uh, this inauguration day. Family, do not be out on the streets of D.C., (coughs) Charlottesville, Louisville, Stone Mountain, these all these places to where have a very big sentimental value for the religion of white supremacy. Y'all have to be on guard, be safe. Don't be in areas you don't need to be in. So just make sure you keep mindful of your surroundings at all times. Uh, the Boogaloo Boys. Uh, are definitely looking to issue in their Rahoa. So they're letting you know they ain't going away. The inauguration is not wiping away white supremacy. White supremacists are looking to be more active as days come. So uh, black folks, you need to make sure you're not the biggest soft targets. Don't be out here dancing, twerking in the streets, doing stupid shit. Keep your asses at home. Watch it on TV if you want to. But don't be like the lady that just wanted to walk through a protest, get her wig snatched off, get held and bear maced by white supremacists, and then turn around and act like they were saving her. If you believe that they were her heroes, then you as stupid as she is for defending them. Well, with that being said, I just want to do this quick little video, give you that tidbit. Again, Beatzilla, PDX official, just a quick hit, quick clip, and I'm gone. Peace.